Hey guys, YouTuber100 here, and now continuing the Pixar reviews. Now here's my review of Ratatouille. So, yeah, I think that this is a pretty good movie. Yeah, it's definitely a step up from Cars, yeah. I really don't think it is really as good as stuff like Toy Story, Monsters, Inc., Finding Nemo, and The Incredibles. Yeah, it is still a pretty good movie, yeah. This is the second Pixar film under the direction of Brad Bird, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, and once again, like The Incredibles, it has mostly, like, a non-human cast, well, it's kind of a mix between the humans and rats, but, yeah, still has, like, the human cast as a lot of the main characters, and, yeah, it's pretty good, yeah, yeah, this was the last Pixar film I saw continuously, yeah, I saw every picture from, from Toy Story 2 to this, as I said earlier, yeah. And since then, the only, since this film, the only two Pixar films that I have seen in theaters are Toy Story 3 and Monsters University. I haven't seen any other ones in the theaters. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, despite the fact that I did like this film, I thought it was pretty good. I don't know. This just made me feel like Pixar was just taking a turn, and they just were going in a direction I didn't want them to. So yeah, after this, I was really just, I really stopped keeping up with the Pixar films. Um, yeah, I guess it's mostly due to Cars. Yeah, like I said, uh, I just didn't like Cars, and yeah, I just felt that Cars was really what really like had my disinterest in Pixar films began. Yeah, if it wasn't for the Cars films, I probably would be keeping up with the Pixar films still, and I would probably still see every one in the theaters. But yeah, just because of the, what Cars did, it just really made me like just lose my interest in the Pixar films as much, and I just stopped following them. And yeah, after this was when I just like stopped going to the theaters to see most of them. But yeah, I still do like the film. Um, yeah, I really like what it does. I like how it actually has Remy, and me actually wanting to be a cook, despite the fact that he's a rat and not a person. And yeah, and he's actually controlling Linguini to make the foo the way he wants it done. And yeah, it's funny the way he controls him, just by pulling his hair kind of, he's like a Power Ranger controlling a Zord. Yeah, yeah, it is a funny way of how he controls Linguini. And yeah. Yeah, just, yeah, this film has a lot of funny things about it, and it's done really well. Well, and yeah, then, yeah, when I just rewatched this, this is just, like, this is different from how I remember it was in the theaters. Here's, yeah, I don't remember it really being like this, but yeah, it was still good. Yeah, I would give this probably, I don't know, 3.25 stars out of 4. Yeah, it's still a real good movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you have people like Patton Oswalt, old Lou Romano, you know, Peter O'Toole, Brad Garrett, John Ratzenberger once again. And yeah, and yeah, Brad Bird does another voice, and yeah. Yeah, so yeah, a decent cast of this. And yeah, plot's really good, even though I'm not really a fan of it. Yeah, I don't know, like, what movies obsessions are with, like, French restaurants, I mean, just like a bunch of movies and TV shows that are set in a restaurant and they're French. I mean, do movies just have a, like, really, like, big liking for the French people? So, yeah, it's kind of weird seeing that, but, yeah, it's not really bad. Bad, yeah. So, yeah, but, yeah, still a real good movie. So, yeah, let me just get right into it. Alright, so the movie opens with, like, a commercial or something about uh, the chef, Auguste Cousteau, Gusteau, and, yeah, about his restaurant, on Gusteau's. And then it shows, like, the food critic, like, Anton Ego. And, yeah, he was just, like, talking about he actually, like, made the restaurant lose a star. And that's what, and then it made Ling, it Gusteau. Da pass away, and then it showed Remy, Eve, who was just a rat, along with his rat clan, including his 
Yeah, including his brother Emil. Emil, and yeah, the clan is run by by Remy's father. Yeah, yeah, and they just yeah, and yeah, the clan of rats just live like above a. They just, like, live above an old woman's home. They just live in her ceiling. Ceiling, and yeah. They, and Remy and the other rats just gain food from people. Well, just gain food for the rats. Yeah, it's kind of similar to a, a bug's life, how they were gaining food for the grasshoppers. Yeah, it's kind of the same thing here, but this time the food is for themselves, not for, like, another species. Yeah. 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 And it turned out that Gusto is actually Remy's idol, and Remy wants to be a cook. And then once, like, a piece of cheese, like, becomes cooked with, like, I don't think it was a lightning strike or something. Uh, it got cooked somehow. Remy sees that he can cook, and then, yeah, he comes across Gusto's famous cookbook. And, yeah, he was trying to get some food along with a meal. But then the old lady who whose house that they live above, she spots Remy, and yeah, it's funny, she actually tried, like, shooting with a gun at Remy, and then she shot the chandelier, which caused it to fall, and all the rat clan and fell with the chandelier, and then, yeah, the woman was just continuing to fire at, at the rats, and then, yeah, the rats then had to abandon, and then, yeah, they... Yeah, they were just, like, going through the water, and then, yeah, Remy was trying to catch up, but he got separated from the rest of the clan by the woman's gunshots. And then, yeah, Remy ended up in the sewers of Paris, and then he found himself, off oh, like, just in the Paris, and he saw Gusteau's restaurant. Huh? Yeah. Mm, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, throughout the movie, Remy is visited by, like, Gusto's ghost, or I don't know if it was just Remy was imagining it, or if the ghost was just haunting, or not really haunting, but giving Remy advice since Remy liked him. Yeah. 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 And then yeah, Remy then just overlooking the kitchen of the restaurant. And then yeah, inside the restaurant they showed oh the. Oh, like, Gusto's ex-girlfriend's son, son, named Alfredo Linguini, he was hired to the restaurant as the garage boy by the new owner of the restaurant, Skinner, and he was also Gusto's was sous chef. Yeah. And then... Linguini accidentally spilled over a pot of soup, and then, yeah, he tried to just remake it, but, yeah, it just wasn't going good at all. He was just putting whatever he saw in there, and, yeah, it just wasn't doing good at all. And Remy saw that, and then he just j fell into the kitchen, and he tr just actually, like, made the soup to perfection. And, and yeah, and then, yeah, Linguini then saw Remy... Remy. And then, yeah, Linguini was confronted by Skinner, and then, yeah, Linguini just tried to, like, cover up Remy to keep Skinner from seeing a rat in the kitchen. Yeah. And, yeah, and as Skinner is confronting Linguini, the soup was then, then being served to the customers, and, yeah, people loved the soup. The soup was just made to perfection, thanks to Remy. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. Skinner was about to let Linguini go or something, but then the the restaurant's only female chef, Colette, has convinced Skinner to just keep Linguini. He can, yeah, he's, yeah, and of course, Linguini was the one that was, was assumed to be who made the soup, even though it was really Remy that did it. <laughs> Yeah, and then, yeah, then Skinner originally saw Remy trying to leave. Eve, but then, yeah, yeah, then he just, Skinner made Linguini he take Remy 
just far, far away from the restaurant to kill it. it. And because, yeah, he knew that people, like, like, would have, like, wouldn't like it if there was really, they like, knew that there was a rat in their kitchen or anywhere near the restaurant. So, yeah. Linguini then, and took Remy far away. Eh? And then, yeah, he then realized that Remy had intelligence and he liked to cook food. So he decided to keep eat Remy. And yeah, Linguini decided that they could work together to make food. And they would be partners as chefs. And at first, after he set, he let Remy loose. Was, Remy tried to escape at first, but then, yeah, he then came back. And yeah, he agreed to work with Linguini. And then, yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah. And they were trying to figure out a way how to communicate so Linguini knew how to cook foods. And yeah, then, yeah, Remy decided the way he could do it was just... Let's pull onto his hair to control what he does, which is funny. And yeah, he was hiding under Linguini's chef hat to, to control him so nobody would actually see Remy on him. Yeah, and then Skinner assigned Colette to try to train Linguini. And then, yeah, Link Skinner was suspicious Ishus, of Linguini actually being Gusto's son. And to, and to, like, be the rightful heir to the restaurant. And he felt that it might be a threat to the restaurant's reputation to establish the packaged food for the franchise be started after the Gusto's death. And yeah, and yeah, Skinner just wanted it to be verified that Linguini was really Gusto's son. And so yeah, he called a lawyer to try to try to confirm it. Yeah. And then yeah, Remy eventually discovered heard the actual truth of Linguini's inheritance after he found Gusto's will. No. Well, and then, yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, the rest of the crew decided us found out about it, and then, yeah, he gave the restaurant, gave the franchise to Linguini, and, yeah, just let Skinner go. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, and Linguini and Colette start, like, falling for each other, and they, like, are having some romance for each other, and, yeah, Remy just didn't feel, yeah, and Remy just was feeling left out because Linguini was getting the credit for all the stuff that he was really doing. Yeah, and then eventually Remy, he then found his father, his father, Django, and Emil, uh, along with the clan again. And, yeah, the family tried to take him back to the new lair. And, yeah. And despite the fact that Remy was glad that his family was safe, he was telling them what was happening. Happening. And that he now is working the food and he can't stay with them. But his father was trying to show him. Him, actually, what happens to rats when they're caught by humans? But Remy, he still wanted to stay a, with the restaurant and still make the food. Yeah, and then, yeah, Anton Ego, the food critic, was finding out about what hap what's happening with Gusto's. And yeah, he hadn't reviewed the restaurant in some time. And yeah, it was, was because of, like I said, that he took away a star rating from the restaurant, and that is what really made Gusto die. And then he came to the restaurant, and then, yeah, he told Linguini that he'll be re-reviewing the restaurant the next night. Yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, Remy decided that he should like to lead his clan and into the pantry of the restaurant, but then Linguini then and caught uh, the uh, 
like Remy in the pantry and then he eventually found the rest of his clan and then he throws them out and yeah he just told Remy to stay away and if he comes back again he will treat him like a real rat yeah and then yeah then yeah it was later on on Skinner or then eventually found out about Remy's skills and yeah he knew that he was the one who was really controlling Linguini and then yeah Skinner captured Remy, he, and he tried to, he was attempting to use Remy to create some new foods, but, but eventually, he, he, Remy's clan rescued him from Skinner, and then, yeah, Remy then returned back to the restaurant, and, and then, yeah, he, just, both he and Linguini knew that Linguini couldn't cook without Remy. Yeah. And then, yeah. Linguini, then, just, he thanked Remy for coming back. And, yeah, he knew that they needed, he needed Remy in order to make the food. And, yeah, then, Remy, then, after the rest of the kitchen staff saw Remy in the kitchen, they were going to go after him, but Linguini stopped him. And then he told the staff what was really happening and that Remy was the one that's actually been making the food. But yeah, of course, none of the staff believed him, I and mean, they just all walked out, out, including Colette. And yeah, 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 and yeah, Linguini was obviously upset, and so was Remy. But then yeah, all of Remy's rat clan turned, and yeah, yeah, they realized how much cooking really meant to Remy, and so the the entire clan. And took over the kitchen, and they were cooking. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, both Linguini and Colette f discovered it. We did. Discovered it. And so, yeah, they... And so, yeah. Linguini decided to take the job of the waiter. As Ego was sitting there, waiting for his order in the restaurant. Uh, to give it the review. And then, yeah, Colette then returned, and yeah, she realized that Linguini was telling the truth. And yeah, Remy decided that they should serve Ego the Ratatouille. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so despite the fact that this movie's really called Ratatouille, the actual Ratatouille really isn't a big part of this film at all. Yeah, I guess it's just a pun that since it's a rat as the main character. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. And Colette was starting to pre prepare Ratatouille. To we her way, but Remy stopped her from doing it that way. And yeah, they, yeah, they. He showed both Colette and Linguini how to prepare Ratatouille his way. And yeah, they prepared it and then they served it to Ego. Ego. Oh yeah, and yeah, Ego took his bite. And yeah, he was just, he was just so shocked of how much he liked it. Like that, that he just, yeah, it just brought back memories to Ego of his mother's own cooking. And yeah, <laughs> it's funny, like during the service, like, both Skinner and a uh, health inspector that Skinner was report reported, like, uh, the rats to, they came into the kitchen and saw all the rats, and then the rats, like, tied them up and locked them in the pantry you know, to prevent them from revealing the Thing that rats are in their kitchen. And then, yeah, Ego wanted to see the chef responsible for making it, but Linguini and Colette told him that he'll have to wait until every other customer has left before he can see the chef. And then, yeah, he waited until everybody else left. And then, yeah, they showed Skinner, uh, not Skinner, sorry, Ego, that it was Remy making the food. Ooh. Yeah, and yeah, they were just telling him that despite how hard it is to believe it was true. And then, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, Ego was just, like, he really didn't have a lot to say, and he just thanked them for the food and left. And then, yeah, he wrote the really big positive review for the paper about the restaurant. But then it turned... Yeah, and then, yeah, he stated that the chef was nothing less than the finest chef in France. 
But it turns out that since the rats had to release the health inspector and Skinner, the restaurant ended up closing down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but it turned out that Ego just stopped as a critic and he made a new chain for the and called La Ratatouille. And yeah, it was run by Remy Linguini and Colette. And yeah, he, yeah, and yeah. Ego once again loved his food, and yeah, and he requested some dessert, and he just wanted to be surprised with it, and yeah, it showed that the rats were also settling in on the roof, like it was a restaurant for themselves. Yeah, and that's how it ended. So yeah, 3.25 stars out of 4. This is a really good movie right here. I really did enjoy this. Alright, so that does for my review of Ratatouille. I hope you guys enjoyed this review, and yeah, I'm going to try to also make my Wally -E review today sometime, yeah, because I really want to make my up review tomorrow for Christmas Eve, and I want my Toy Story 3 review to be for Christmas Day, so yeah, I'll pr try to get my Wally -E review up today also, so yeah, stay tuned for that, so yeah, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.